The purpose of multi-circuit lighting instruments is to give the user the ability to display and report data associated with lighting devices that are made up of more than one controllable source of light. It is also possible to model, control and render multiple sources of light from this single object using this kind of instrument symbol when it is converted to a lighting device. Most typically this would include multicell units such as Altman sky sykes and source 4 multipass strips where there is more than one controllable light source within each device. This kind of object was more useful when most lighting devices used incandescent sources. However, with the advent of LED wash lights that group the sources together to create effects on the lens and through haze, then the functionality of multi-circuit lighting devices can be worthwhile when you want to create renders for collaborators and clients. How you build a multi-cell symbol to achieve this kind of functionality is relatively straightforward, but does require you to stick closely to some strict criteria. To illustrate what happens when you create a multi-circuit lighting instrument symbol, I'm going to import a single Altman PAR64 instrument symbol from the Vectorworks libraries. Then I'm going to drag the symbol onto the plot. It is important that you do not double click on the symbol definition in the resource manager, as this will activate the lighting device tool and convert it into a lighting device. What you need for now is just the symbol. I'm then going to duplicate it five more times using the Move by Points tool and then select all six symbols and run the Create the Symbol command. Name it and use the next mouse click as the insertion option. I need to find the midpoint between the two insertion points of the middle two symbols and then click to define the insertion point of the six lamp strip. The program will probably ask you where you want to place the symbol and I'm going to place it at the root of the file. You can now delete the symbol from the drawing area. If I go back to the resource manager and locate the symbol I just made, then what I need to do for this symbol to function correctly and convert to a multi-circuit lighting instrument when I double click on it is to attach the light info record. The light info record is one of a few default record formats that have been set up to contain library data for individual lighting instruments. It is the presence of this record that determines whether a symbol is a lighting instrument. The data the record contains refers to the type of instrument the symbol represents, along with other data such as beam angle and weight. So right click and select attach record and select the light info record. Although you should fill in all the relevant information, it is not strictly necessary in order to make the symbol function. So I'll leave all the fields blank for now. Then double click on the symbol definition and insert it into the drawing area. I have a very simple label legend set to active, so immediately a label legend is attached to each device. And you can see that if I run the spotlight numbering tool, that each parkan is individually accounted for within the context of the single multi-circuit device. If I go to the object information palette, you can see that I can control the values for all the cells or each cell individually by using this menu. If I take a look at the lighting devices in a top view, you can see that if I run the Focus Lighting Devices command, that all of the bodies of the lighting devices tilt up as you'd expect. What determines the movement of the symbol geometry once it has been converted to a lighting device is the presence of another default record format. This record is called the parts record and is attached to whatever geometry within a symbol will represent the various moving parts of a lighting device. The parts record contains a number of fields, but there are three main fields that concern the movement of the lighting device. The base field, 
which refers to any attachment hardware such as clamps or stationary geometry that is fixed to a rigging position. The yoke field that identifies geometry that will pan and the body field that identifies objects that will contain the light source and that will tilt. Additionally, it will pan as well if yoke geometry is also present in the symbol. As there is a yoke part present within the lighting device, then all of the yoke parts will move as one object in the same way that a single lighting device will do. So, what the multi-circuit functionality of the lighting device is broadly doing is moving the various parts of the object around a common insertion point, which is the insertion point of the multi-circuit lighting instrument symbol I just made. It is important to understand that multi-circuit lighting instruments move all of their various parts as part of one complete object. If you want to insert multiple lighting instruments into a drawing in the same way as you would a conventional six lamp bar, then you need to take a slightly different approach. If you duplicate the symbol you just made and rename it, then with a few more clicks, a symbol that will accomplish what you need will be created. Firstly, you need to edit the symbol options and check the Convert to Group box here. Secondly, edit the 2D or 3D component of the symbol and select all of the objects. Then, run the Convert to Lighting Device command from the Spotlight menu and exit the edit window. Finally, and very importantly, you need to remove the Light Info record from the group symbol definition in the resource manager. Now when you double click on the symbol definition, the lighting devices will be inserted inside a group which you can ungroup when you like. You will notice that the lights have acquired the lighting pipe height and when you focus them they should respond as individual lighting devices. This lighting instrument symbol is also a multi-circuit lighting instrument and is from the Soft Symbol Library website. The site has a huge range of lighting instrument symbols that are all extremely well put together and based on some really rigorous drafting standards. If I drag this symbol onto the light plot and convert the symbol to a group, You can see that when I ungroup the object, it is made from three separate symbols. Each one of these symbols represents the left side, center, and right side of the multi-part lighting instrument. And as you can see from a 3D view, each one is slightly different. If I were to edit this symbol and take a look at the geometry, I can see that it is comprised of a group that has a parts record attached with the base field checked. As well as that, there is an extrude that represents the body and you can see that the body field is also checked. There is also a 3D locus at the point where the body should tilt. If I were to double click on this symbol now and insert it as a lighting device, Then when I run the Focus Lighting Devices command, I can provide a pan and tilt to the device in the usual way. However, when I exit this dialog, only the tilt function will work. This is because there has been no geometry assigned to the yoke part, which means that no pan function is possible in 3D. To add the pan function, you need to edit one of the symbols and assign it to some geometry. In this case, 
I'm going to ungroup this object. The parts record that is attached to this group will now be attached to the individual objects inside. I will leave the hook clamp as the base, which is correct, and then change the parts record on this yoke geometry from base to yoke. When I exit the symbol, the body and yoke geometry pan as expected, and any base geometry remains fixed as it should do. If I were to do the same task on the right-hand symbol as well, then the same result will be achieved. So this functionality is perfect for strip lights where no pan function is necessary. Because this symbol is laid out in this way, it means that you can display the cells of a lighting device schematically. And by attaching label legends to each cell, you can display color and channel info clearly and concisely. You can also enable the lighting device color function in Spotlight Preferences and the color of the individual cells within the multi-circuit lighting device will update to show any color filter choices you have made.